What's up my fellow fly fishermen? Grim Ferguson here, host of Flycast in Colorado. Today we are going up to a uh, river that's pretty close to my house, which is really nice. What we're planning on doing is going up and fishing a section that I know has a lot of really nice pockets and just doing a lot of pocket water fishing. This should be super fun. I'm super excited. Um, they just had a, or this river just had a pretty, this river just had a good October caddis hatch, which is really nice. So definitely gonna be throwing a little bit of dry dropper action in there. Hopefully I'll have some good tips and tricks in there to help you guys become better fly fishermen yourselves. And on that note, let's get into it. Well, don't want to repeat what we did at one time. So, I'm going to take it nice and easy. Alright guys, we're here. I'm starting off with a dry dropper rig with an October caddis for a dropper, er, uh, dry. Here we go guys, nice little brownie. This guy took the uh, dropper, nice little brownie, let's let him go. Off he goes, nice fish. So what you see me do and what I'm going to be doing for pretty much the rest of the video is I'm going to be using my dry fly which is that big buoyant, I think it's actually a Madam X with the legs taken off but the, uh, it looks a ton like an October caddis, so I decided to throw that on as my dry fly, but basically what I'm doing is I'm using that dry fly as a strike indicator, so if you see that dry fly pause, twitch, wiggle, anything that a strike indicator would, you always want to set that hook, and especially because what I see a lot of people doing is they'll see a fish come up and they'll uh, look at the dry fly and then they'll uh, basically swim back down or they'll like eat something below, always set the hook on that even if you don't see them take your dry fly set the hook on that because a lot of times they just took your dropper which a lot of times is going to be trailing slightly below your dry fly in the water column and sometimes even when you see a fish come up and eat on the surface right behind your dry fly set the hook as well because there are a lot of times where that is actually going to be your nymph that's trailing behind your fly and the fish is just going to come up and end up eating your nymph off the surface There's one. Another guy on the dropper. Let the dry fly guy go. Man, that water is chilly. Sorry, I uh, stopped it there. I didn't think that I was recording, but I guess I was. Had this guy come up and hit my uh, dry. Nice brownie. Here's the release of this nice brownie. Hit the dry. Back into the water he goes. You guys, I've caught four fish so far in just this, uh, just this stretch right here. So, uh, definitely, um, really dissect each hole. There 
we go guys, nice brownie. Very nice brown. Oh, we got a little bow, you guys. Tiny little guy. Here's the release of this nice little bow. Back into the water he goes. Nice little fish. It took him like three tries to finally get the fly in his mouth. Little did he know, this was just the beginning of the rain of the baby rainbows. <laughs> Little guy, and back into the water. Huh, kind of funny. So I am not even kidding right now you guys, I caught so many tiny baby rainbows I decided to just throw them all together in this montage for you. Drop it. So I kind of guessed that the reason that there were so many of these tiny little rainbows was because uh, on this stretch of the river I'm fishing, which in fact is Clear Creek, um, I honestly think that they probably stocked it with some really small rainbows because there are not a lot of rainbows in Clear Creek. There are some, but they're few and far between. You don't find them all the time. So my guess is that they stock them and to find little ones in such a high quantity is pretty crazy. Um, but I mean, after catching, I totaled it up around 17 of those tiny little rainbows. Towards the end of the day, unfortunately, my GoPro died and my phone died while it was on the tripod recording. But my mom did manage to get a little bit of it. I actually caught a really nice rainbow for this river at least but i mean it was really nice to see a better big sized rainbow at least big again from this river since the fish here don't get gargantuan but i mean there are quite a few nice sized fish if you look hard enough they do stock it occasionally with some bigger sized rainbows but i'm pretty sure that they put in all those small rainbows um to kind of establish a population of them um, on Clear Creek, which honestly in the long run, once those fish grow up and start reproducing themselves, that would actually be really cool. And I'm excited to see the rainbow population hopefully grow. I noticed that the biggest factor in catching most of these fish was my dropper length. I had my dropper length at around 16 inches, which is pretty long considering what I normally do. But I mean, sometimes in some of these deeper holes, having a long dropper really helped. So if you're fishing a dry dropper and you're not catching as many fish on the dropper, don't be afraid to it really increase your dropper length because a lot of times that'll catch you fish. But one of the other things that I really like to do is I like to fish a really short dropper. I'm talking like maybe eight inches, maybe. And then what I'll do is on the back of that, I will use an emerger pattern, say an RS2 or a midge emerger or something like that. 
and it will kind of ride in the surface film trailing behind my dry fly and it looks like one of those nymphs that's trying to emerge and I'm telling you right now I've got some vicious strikes on that type of fly and honestly they'll come up and they'll hit it like it's a dry fly but I mean without further ado here's the clip of the big rainbow. Are you okay? My butt has never been the same. Caught this really big rainbow on a stimmy. Didn't get the hook up. My uh, phone died. All sorts of technical problems. We had to go run get a charger, but beautiful, beautiful fish. And uh, we're gonna let him go to live another day. And off he goes. What a beautiful fish. So guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I had a ton of fun making it. I'm sorry I haven't uploaded in a little bit here. I've been super busy doing some super cool stuff. I just got a brand new GoPro, um, but I was having a bunch of technical difficulties with it. I'm still kind of figuring it out and stuff like that. It's just, uh, so I got an SD card error, so I went out and I recorded this super awesome video for you guys at a lake that has some of the brown spawning which is uh, Lake Georgetown you guys might know that um, did a ton of fishing there and caught a bunch of fish but I lost all the footage because the GoPro wasn't recording in a certain format which it needs to in order for me to actually download them which really sucks but I mean sorry I haven't been getting a video out to you guys hopefully you guys are uh, still enjoying the channel um, expect a channel update here pretty soon to just kind of fill in some stuff because I've got some awesome plans for this channel in the future and I'm so excited to see where it leads. As you guys know, uh, fall is here, winter is coming up. Hopefully we get a ton of snow because a lot of these rivers are really low right now. But uh, yeah, I hope you guys really enjoyed this video and I will see you guys in the next episode.